we've all heard it said, church hurts, but you have to ask yourself, okay, and that's what we're going to talk about in this show and each and every week, church hurts, and with the man who's going to give you some ideas and some hope, John Bash. Hey, John. Hey, Paul. What a treat to launch into another uh, another show with Theodora Papazzi. Do you remember Theodora, Paul? I do, and we only got halfway through her story the last time here. She came from a communist country, grew up without any religion, in a world that we can't even imagine, no church, and then found some sort of spirituality or faith, and we're going to talk about that. Well, as I remember, you kind of had religion because you had a church in the your backyard and you helped clean it clandestine church yeah right yes. right yes secret uh, church after each uh, religious holiday there were uh, stains of uh, melted uh, candles so we have to clean that and put the rugs in place and chairs and uh, it that was doesn't, fun that, i was just saying that does not sound like fun <laughs> oh yes, for us it was. <laughs> and am I, I'm trying to. We got picture. to sing in the choir there. Oh, did you? I didn't know. Well, not like every Sunday right. or something. When that religious holidays were. So was church just a memory kept alive by those older, or did it mean something to by you? By our grandparents. Yeah. Did it mean anything? Was it just a superstition? I got to cross myself, and I got to do, touch the icon, and do all these things, or did it mean anything? Uh as a child, it didn't mean anything. It was something that our grandchild, uh, grandparents taught us, and we were just doing it. Getting older, try to be something else. And, and so we had discussed it, a bit, the, the officially though, because you were under communist rule at the time, it really wasn't approved. And no. yet for many of you, you still had a surface connection to the church as you did. Yes, and uh, we kept it in our souls, but uh, it's a superstition too. They are not to deny whatever is religion, you better accept it. But I, you do it in your own soul, mind. You don't say it loud. I want to talk about that in a little bit. But first, I want to get a story of kind of connecting you and encourage people to go back and listen to the first show with you. But. Um, there came a time in your life, speed through, you've gotten through childhood, you somehow missed college, even though they encouraged you to go and they told you exactly where to go. And then they told you what job you would go to since you didn't. But then you ended up married and you had a child and you were married to a rather rebellious man. Would that be a good summary? Yes. And, and, <laughs> and he wasn't real pleased with uh, living under communism and the rules and decided that he wanted Fled. to get out of the country, right? Yes, he tried it uh, three times before uh, we met, and once after we met, and he succeeded. Okay, so mm -hmm. here you, you married to this man that the authorities don't approve of very much, and you were a lady of some um, distinction or known to be a good lady in, in town, a good businesswoman at this point, I assume. I, uh, no, I wasn't a business woman. You weren't yet? Not okay. yet. I okay. just finished high school. But my father was. and. Uh, but you told us you were a good communist. You were. Uh, I was. Yeah. I was. <laughs> uh, and my father was too. Otherwise, he couldn't have a good job. Yeah. Your, so, fa your father in the Communist Party, in fact, was the head of the Communist union. Party in that uh, village and the president of the Like labor stores. union or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. the store, the union of some sort, a right? Stores, yeah, yeah. retail so, stores, retail stores, okay. retail stores, yeah. All so, right, so get to, so get to the. Here's the husband. Uh, he has you. He has a child, and um, and he says, yeah, but I want to get out of here. How did that happen? It happened by swimming across Danube, uh, at the border with Yugoslavia, and uh, it was very hard. He trained himself for a year to get the strength to swim in fast uh very fast Correct. way and, yeah. and what are you doing the whole time oh you're helping him train so he can leave you i was there <laughs> with the baby and just let him do it yes we live on the danube river but not on the side that he chose so this is I, it just seems rather hard i'm sure people are shaking their heads so honey i'm i gotta go 
okay, I'll help you. And the day comes. Let's take the baby down. Wave goodbye. There goes daddy. He's swimming yes, across the it river. It was a very hard period for me, but I was young and I didn't really understood what it will happen and how it's going to be. Did he say he was going to come back for you? Was there no, plans for you to I join knew him? He, uh, it was um, uh, something to reunite families. A program that maybe program, so, someday yes. if he could get out, then maybe he could bring you over or yes, something. Yes, right? yes, yes. But we didn't know anything in the beginning because we didn't know where he will end up, free or in prison. And where did he end up? Free at this time. But let's but one more thing before we get to him succeeding in this crazy swim across the Danube. He had to prepare because when you get to the other <laughs> side, um, for example, he had to have money, and he couldn't take Romanian currency, so he was saving up dollars. Dollars, yes. He sh um, hid, hid? Hid, 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 hid them right. in the sole of the shoe, and um, then he had a good watch. Uh, but by the time he prepared himself to enter the water, before the water they have very dried uh, branches, so the soldiers will hear any noise. Uh, being afraid, he took the money out, put them near uh, a pole, and when he decided to enter the water, he forgot the money. So he fled oh. without the oh. money and just that watch. And it was a very hard period for him because he had to travel by pass, Yugoslavia and all Yugoslavia. Which and, was communist as well. Uh, yes, and he was afraid to be caught there, so he had to travel by train up in the mountains no up, oh, up above the train above, not yeah. above the train in between it is a empty space oh in the toilet and then you go up in a little little space there well, I got to the attic of the train yeah yeah i didn't know there was an attic and a train here right. it is it is something there yes and, and he hid there and he got where did he get to austria or uh, to? uh to the border with greece with Greece, he oh, went, so he went that way, okay, south. Yes, he went down, and he went to Greece uh, uh, by pretending that he's uh, fishing, so he didn't know when he passed Yugoslavia and he was into the Greek territory. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know where I was. <laughs> so yes. now, how did he communicate back? He can't call you on a cell phone and say, honey, I'm here. We didn't have a phone call. Well, uh, first think he sent a postcard to the police station saying hello from uh, Greece. <laughs> I'm free. And then he called us. That's but sort of knew... a defiant move. Here, up yours. I'm in Greece. I yes. made it. Yeah. Uh, we knew our phone will be listened to all the time, so we didn't say anything important. Just, Wouldn't you uh, be punished, though? Here you are, a good member of the Communist I Party. Was, Your father's uh, a good I member was, of the Communist uh, Party, and somebody disgraces the Communist Party by... Yeah, my father a, was taken out of his uh, um, job. job. Uh, from the president, he became a, a worker with no skills, the lowest part. He was taken out of the Communist Party in a big... Uh, meeting and uh, said that he wasn't uh, good enough to uh, raise his daughter because wow. I asked for following him. I was taken out of the uh, young union of uh, communists. Because you should have people. reported him. You should have, You sh first of all, you should have never associated with somebody like this. And if you did, you certainly shouldn't have helped him. And you certainly should have reported him somewhere along the way. This was just a disgrace that you let this happen, right? From yeah. my part, too. Yes. Yeah. So then we don't have time, but basically <laughs> via Germany and ultimately you Italy, got to... Yes, we got uh, to Canada. got to Canada. And for um, 10 years, right? 11. 10 years, okay. 11 years in Canada. And you decided uh, to make a living. You started a restaurant. Yes, he bought a restaurant uh, after uh, two months there. Of course, not with uh, cash all the money, but we started that. And I was crying because I said, I don't know anything about this. And he said, you learn. And I did <laughs> learn. In one month, I learned everything there and even better than the man that was before so you got out so, re re reunited and got to canada and started a new career yes, in a restaurant yes how do you get back to yugoslav how do you get back to romania i was allowed to leave romania legally and he waited 
until the revolution to go back. Ah, okay. So once communism fell, then it was yes, everything then was okay. He, he was allowed. He didn't have the Romanian citizenship. He had only Canadian citizenship. So. And why go back? If Romania hasn't been kind to him. Why go back? Oh, he missed family, friends, and the life there. I think he, for him it was harder in Romania, uh, in Romania, in Canada, than it was for me. And are you two still together? Did that work out? No, we divorced. And, and was that due to the pressure of coming back and or changes in the world? I mean, you don't have to give us a deep detail. No, but it was because of his change into kind of wealthy men coming back from Canada and all the girls were there for him. Ah, <laughs> suddenly so let's go. I see. Let, yeah. let's, let's take a little different direction okay. Okay. because I want to get um, to you um, got to the place that you solo um, are running this restaurant that's really, I mean, I call you a restaurant tour because it's probably really the, the most successful restaurant in Kalaresh. Um, which for our listeners, if they read it, it would look at Kalarasi, um, is the way we would pronounce mm -hmm. it, but it's Kalaresh. And, um, and you though, um, through ups and downs, I mean, this place has thrived. Um, and what's been, um, what's it been like kind of building where like your life now, you have what's 15 to 25 people who are depending on you for their wages and employment. Um, what's that like in this socialist country that's kind of, uh, but they would call themselves a democracy, is that correct? It, they call it, yes. Well, they have very high taxes and it's hard to keep a small business. It's not a big business where you can do uh, big events, like over a hundred people. You cannot do weddings or uh, baptizing parties. So we rely on people that are coming there every day. So we have to be good for them and uh, uh, be there with new dishes and ideas. And um, in a way, it, it was hard in the beginning because of the lack of the ingredients. And then uh, every year, rules changed, taxes changed, and they are so high. We kind of rely on the next month to meet the end. <laughs> okay, okay. Let, let's get there and just picture it because I have friends who are in the restaurant business here and I see the challenges because the restaurant business is one of the hardest businesses to yeah. have succeed. And you've done it for years and yet um, I became aware that there was a possibility. There were times um, since I have known you when uh, all of a sudden people would come in a way that we are not familiar with and your restaurant would be shut down by outside authorities without any prior notice. Explain what that is like. What's happening? Well, they are institution to come to investigate how much money you are making in a day. And if uh, they are closing the cash register and uh, the pockets of the waiters will be emptied in front of them, you are not allowed to touch anything. Uh, so this has to be correct with what you uh, registered and what they have in their pockets. So this, so is, this is scary because they are coming uh, dressed in uniform with police after them. Uh, they will be from the fire department for the economic police from uh, and did they do this when somebody reports you or they no. suspect something or just random no just random random at midnight maybe they show up they show up and, and that's a pretty totalitarian thing for a country that's uh, supposed to be a democracy here that sounds more like communism uh, yes because they um they are paid by the state but uh, their salary can increase but uh, how much fines they will oh, get so, so there's an incentive you know for them you will to find get a fine right for sure now depends if they find something bad the fine will be bigger if uh, they won't find it they will get the least possible but you still get a fine so we are trying to live with that so here here's what i'm wondering um f again from kind of an american mindset um we hear when we hear about Romania, it's the word corruption is not far from coming next in that. 
Um, and, and yet for us, the whole notion of corruption is, um, it's, it's really become more of the, in the public uh, discussion more recently than ever before in my lifetime. And yet you're familiar with it just in the sense of um, the notion of drives in the process, that business process. I know it's something illegal that's not supposed to happen, but yet as I talk to people, they just kind of shook their head and kind of winked like everybody knows bribery is just going on, kind of part of the grease that makes things happen. Explain a little bit that to me because it sounds to me like some officials are making an awful lot of money through, bri through bribery rather than through their salaries. Exactly, for bribery and uh, they have uh, huge houses and uh, properties and uh, uh, we know that this cannot be done legally because we know how much we work and uh, how much stress we have for build something and we are not able to prosper like they do. So you can see the it's difference. It's a for lifestyle us. there. Yeah. <laughs> a very different lifestyle and and on the other hand um, there seems to be kind of I would say a happiness that's surprising when you really come to understand what tiny wages people are making um, and uh, the level of subsistence of many people um, but I, I want to just practically touch on something and then really get to I think some real hope in a lot of this because reality is um, you live a very nice life and um, you have a great family but as people are listening to this and they've heard Romania they're just sitting there saying any can I ask her about Dracula <laughs> that is Count uh, Vlad uh, Vlad the Impaler. Vlad I think the Impaler is right. not our invention. <laughs> it's Stoker's invention and uh, uh, the only connection is uh, the name of the ruler that was Vlad Dracu has nothing to do with the Impaler. He was in the Impaler because this is a way to punish the corruption. He impaled their heads impaled on stakes it. and yes. it was such and a brutal, so the people. brutal tale that Bram Stoker took, played upon it in the name and turned him into the uh, living dead here. And it actually wasn't their heads, so, but we won't get into <laughs> Oh, I didn't know <laughs> that. We, okay. we, will not, we will not get he into impaled details, something else. But well, I, the the here's the question I have as I'm listening to all this tale, the last episode in this one. You, you, you casually tell us these trying times. You casually lay out the difficulties you face, and yet you persevere, and yet you, you find ways around it and to prosper and live. And, and in this show in particular, what role does spirituality play in that for you? It is having a role i cannot say big because i'm not a church goer go like we're not talking about church now we're talking no. about just other beliefs that keep you going what keeps or what does i'm not trying to put words in about what keeps you going through how do you persevere through that well you know the hope is lost to die so <laughs> we hope that better times will come and uh, we are hoping that for our children to be better and uh, let, let we me, just live with this let, hope. Let me take you here because um, this is one of the reasons that I thought you would be such a fun guest here. Um, you are a young woman but you, many of your friends are retiring and are having more time to travel and as they make decisions, having grown up in the same culture that you did, as they make decisions about trips, um, you're starting to run around um, the world even, mm -hmm. but even throughout Romania, they tend to choose what kind of sites and what kind of places. And why do they tease you a little bit when they try to drag you along? Well, um, they will choose uh, trips to monasteries that we have a lot and uh, we find them very interesting and uh, peaceful that you find there. Uh, a piece of mind and soul and it's uh, we like them and uh, wh wherever they go they will invited me to uh, it was the first time that I went because they will sleep in those monasteries the priest not the priest the monks or the nuns will invite us to the 
meal that they will prepare there and we will be able to stay and listen to their uh, morning uh, hours. And concert. what attracts you to this? Because you grew up without it. You, ha you, you were taught to, to be aware of it by grandparents and parents yes. who didn't grow up under communism, but by your own s recollection, it didn't mean much. It was just an old tradition, maybe even a superstition that you just went through. Now you've been you're free to do more things than you were under communist rule. Maybe not as much as we have the complete freedoms we have here, and yet something pulls you back to that. Well, Why? Sometimes uh, you'll find uh, a very good uh, monk over there that will have the calling and explain you a lot. And um, the nuns too. And uh, it's the peaceness that we find there. And um, actually they are places filled with flowers and uh, uh, interesting buildings where they live and their kind of life and I don't know why maybe it's in our um, is it a longing for something is it a nostalgia this for is, something yes, is yes. it just history and nostalgia is it is it longing for something that you lack in your own life? Maybe, yes, yes. This is what everybody's going there and, and they find peace and, peace peace, and yeah. they find. So sometimes you are able to sleep there too. Let's um, pick up on just one sentence you said that I don't want to miss. Um, because there really are a few people that are getting the ears in the church in Romania. Um, and you define them in terms of the ones with the real calling. You make a distinction. Yes. And yes. they seem to be touching people in a way that the church as a whole, that has largely been dismissed from what I can tell yes. by the average person, even though they might go to church for their uh, baptism of the child, or even though they might go for a wedding ceremony, they're not you know, as you even spoke of, not an active church goer in that sense, but still very much feel um, uh, that you're Christians and that you're part of the Orthodox Church, if you will, um, whether or not you go. But then there are those people who are connecting, who you say, who are called. Just talk a little bit about that, because people really are responding to these priests who are kind of drawn outside the lines a little bit, aren't they? No, no. Uh I don't, I don't know, maybe their life is in there and uh, um, when they have visitors like us, uh, the monks and the nuns are very nice and uh, they are sharing uh, stories with us of other people, of uh, what their life is there and what they are doing. and. Um, we try to think that this is more what a church should do or should have than what we have back home in a regular church. Because back home, we talked about in the first episode, the state still pays the priests. Yes. And then you have to pay, as an ordinary member of the faith, the priests to come out a lot to, to bless the house for all these different religious ceremonies yes. that are much greater than we have here. You talk about even have death of a loved one. For years, they have to come out and go through services and ceremonies and stuff. Yes. And each time they arrive, they expect to be paid. So yes, they get paid yes. by the salary. And, they, and you said some of these priests, oh, my goodness, they're driving Mercedes Benz and operating independent yeah. hotels and hotels, whatnot. They're, yes. they're, so you distinguish between those people, the paid clergy, and those who live a simple monastic life. You see them as true calling, as something different. Yes, and when we go there, we... Um we pay something that is like their prayers for us that can be for six months a year or how much you want and they never ask for money like you pay how much you want so they'll pray for you and they're not asking they don't have one hand out and the next yes, hand for the prayer yes and this yeah. is something that we do with a lot of pleasure i better go to all those monasteries and give them money some people are um going there with food suppliers for them to last. So what's the state of church in Romania? Or what's the state, and what's the state of spirituality, religion, whatever you want to call it, of people? And, and it sounds like there's two different things. There's, a, yes, there's an official different. religion, which still survives, 
and which is part of your ordinary life a little bit. You still either out of superstition or tradition or fear or, or longing participate in a little bit. But it's this other spirituality that you seem to seek. Are you alone? Are you like most people? What? Give us a sense of what Romania looks like today from religion and, and church. Well, churches are full on Christmas and Easter. And uh, on those Saturdays and Sundays when we celebrate our deaths. Otherwise... They are kind of empty. Kind of empty, okay. And how are the people? Are they kind of empty? Are they, are they, uh, you, you experienced when there was no church, now you experience there are churches, but it still isn't, uh, seems to be a kind of corrupt, empty. Corrupt, uh, empty place. Corrupt, empty place. So yes. what is it that they fill their lives with? Uh, you're reaching for something. You seem to be hungry for something. We are talking between ourselves or we just keep it to ourselves. Or we go and visit those places that bring us peace, monasteries. I think there's an and here, Paul. Yeah, I hope so. You know, when you have, um, we say church hurts and, you so easily could think after 50 years of having um, basically an official atheist state. Right. In some senses where the church was outlawed except where they were able to be co-conspirators yeah. um, of, yes. of suppressing the masses. Um, reality is um, that Romanians still have an openness when there's authenticity involved. Yes. And even um, to see many of the people who I met who still, when they went to visit um, places that had been impacted by the gospel in years past and by different movements within the church in Romania, um, they were going as people of faith. They weren't going as cynics. Um, and they were touch base in personal conversation, which is ultimately in the church. I don't care if you're in America or if you're in Romania, when it really gets down to the, the faith that touches your life and your family, it's with those friends. And um, I am just so glad that you were willing to share some of those friends with me. They had a huge impact in my life when I was hurting. And I am just glad that Church Hurts has an end, even in Romania. Well, and maybe the end will give us some, some hope for our own country here. I hope that out of this whole series, we come away with some understanding of where is our spirituality, where is our religion going as people who here in this country for different reasons maybe or maybe the same reasons go less and less to church where do we end up and you know we all say like winston churchill said about democracy hey democracy is the worst system in the world unless you compare it to all the others and what else you got so i take i i i take hope that there is an answer in the authentic relationships and experiences that you're finding maybe there's some hope for us to find the same here and that is what we're going to leave you with, Theodore, as you go back to Romania. Take our love and our blessings with you. Church hurts. And. Yeah. Join us as we explore this subject in further episodes as we delve deeper into the topic that we all hear too often. Church hurts. And right here in Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net.